What's going on everybody, King Tar Heel here, and uh, today we're going to look at Crusader Kings 2. We're going to go into a little basic guide. Uh, this can be kind of a difficult game to get into, especially if you haven't been playing the Paradox games for a long time. Though this is one of the more accessible games uh, in this series, uh, it can get a little bit getting used to, so we're going to take a look at some things. So, let's get started. So when you start your first game, you're going to reach uh, this screen right here. You're going to be able to see uh, a map of the world uh, at this time. You're going to be able to pick the date you want to start. And you're going to be able to go through uh, the different uh, ways to view the map. Here's the terrain, the world view. Uh, here you can see the different, uh, if you hit the independent realms map, you can see the different uh, countries uh, that are around. Uh, and here you can see uh, who you're able to play as in terms of counts, dukes, and kings. So... Here you can see all the different counts if you want to play as a count. You can see the different dukes. And you can see the rulers. Uh, you can also see religion. So you can see where there's going to be conflicts as anytime there's going to be a negative impact anytime you have different religion or culture at the end. So one of the keys uh, to this game is understanding the hierarchy of the time uh, and in the game. So basically there are barons which are in charge of holds like individual churches or towns or cities. Uh, then you have counts. Counts are in charge of counties. So um, they would be in charge of a single county which would hold at least a hold. Then you have dukes which would be essentially in charge of holding multiple counties. And then you have kings who are uh, in charge of whole kingdoms and uh, they don't have a uh, leash. So essentially you're able to go through the hierarchy of the game and you can play as different characters in the game. Now, playing as a king isn't necessarily any better than playing as a count. They're just different. Um, in my opinion, it's actually um, a little more enjoyable to play as a count and work your family legacy up. Um, you know, the ability to play uh, that kind of way. So, you know, being a king, yeah, it's nice not to have a liege, but it, it kind of gives you a lot of different problems as well. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of interesting aspects to play, um, and so you don't just have to pick a, a giant king of a giant kingdom. You can you know be in charge of a count, uh, in, excuse me, in front in a county, and play that way, and it'd be uh, equally enjoyable. So if it's your first serious game and you want to be a, a ruler, a king, I recommend starting with one of the smaller kingdoms. Um, they're just a little easier to manage. It can be a little overwhelming uh, starting off being head of the Holy Roman Empire or France or you know starting off as the King of England. Uh, so maybe Croatia or Leon or, or one of those other countries that you can kind of see how the world works. Um, if you want to be part of a specific country, then I recommend maybe being a count uh, in the Holy Roman Empire if you want to be part of a, a larger scheme. Um, again, they're very different ways to play. Uh, neither one is right. They're both enjoyable. Now, once you've chosen who you want to play, you'll come to the main screen, and before you hit the uh, pause button, there's a lot to do, or the unpause button, there's a lot to do. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to look at your character, and uh, we chose to be the, excuse me, Duke of Uldruf, the first of Saxony, uh, and here we're a duke in a rather large part of the Holy Roman Empire. So we have the benefit of being in the Holy Roman Empire, the resources of that, the protection of that, and we're also pretty high up. We direct report to the emperor. Uh, of the Holy Roman Holy Roman Empire, so there's a great uh, bit of intrigue there. Uh, we're able to grow. We have a lot of power, but at the same time, we have the focus uh, of being inside the Holy Roman Empire. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go up here and you want to look at the different um, options you have in these little stained glass windows. You can do. Uh, we have three titles that can be created. Uh, we have an unmarried heir. Uh, we have to pick an ambition. And we also have a claim, um, which will go through each of these. Now, the first of the four is the create a title. Uh, here, you can go through and you can make titles that you can give to your heirs or to other noblemen that you want. Uh, generally, this is expensive, so uh, we won't be going that much into it. It's something I can go into in a later date. Uh, but it's nothing that I can afford uh, to create at this moment, but that's the general gist of it. Next up is the uh, unmarried heir button. This is announcing to us that uh, we have an heir our son who is unmarried so we need to uh, arrange a marriage for him uh, a arranging a marriage uh, at this level can be very powerful we can make a very powerful ally uh, so we have to that's not a decision to take very lightly uh, so that's um, one of the first things we need to do is to make sure that uh, we get a wife for our heir for our own political gain next of the four is to pick an ambition uh, here we're able to choose an ambition that we want uh, 
for our life. Uh, there's plenty. Uh, each person starts with an individual one, so there's not all these different uh, choices uh, for everybody. Uh, so we can do a plot uh, to see that somebody is dead, or we may want to become chancellor or steward, or we may want to get wealth, or we may want to have a daughter. Uh, there's tons of different choose, uh, excuse me, ambitions to choose from. So you just pick what ambition you want uh, to start your role playing as your uh, as your player. Now, lastly, after picking ambition, uh, we have our claims. And essentially, in this game, you can't just go to war. You can't just say, I'm going to take you over, I'm going to build an army and take you over. You have to have a reason to go to war. You have to be able to explain to your people, to uh, your liege, to other people why I'm going to war. So you have to have a necessary claim. And there's a lot of ways to get claims if you don't have one. You can make one up, you can kind of go on borderline territory, or you can have a legitimate claim. Uh, but that you need to have a claim before you can start a war. So since it's early in the game, we don't want to be more warmongering just yet. So, But that's what that button does. So before we start the game, we're going to go take a quick tutorial on how the economy works. And essentially, everybody pays taxes to their liege. Uh, so barons pay taxes to the counts, counts pay taxes to the dukes, dukes pay taxes to the king or the emperor. Uh, so... What this essentially means is that the more vassals you have, the more money you have, um, and the more holds you have, the more uh, the more money you have. So every and it's all dependent on how much they like you. So if they like you a lot, then you're going to get more money. If they dislike you, then they're not going to give you uh, any money. And actually, if they have a rating below zero, that percentage. Uh, they will take away from how much tax they give you. So if you have someone with a negative 5 rating of you, you will lose 5% of their income from that vassal. So each county has mass, uh, excuse me, multiple holds in that county that are run by barons. So there are three different types of holds you can have. You can have cities, which have high tax, low levies. You can have temples, which have high levies and high tax, but you only get tax if the bishop in charge of the temple likes you more than the pope or else he'll give his money to the pope and they're also harder to defend and then you have castles which give you high levies and low tax uh, so you have to have a balance between the ability to raise an army and the ability to raise income now each individual hold uh, can be up upgraded individually so if we have our city we can upgrade it with a moat, a palisade uh, that all give uh, added benefits so there's a lot of balancing on there. Uh, I would always recommend building on your own county first. Um, your your home county is what you need to focus on. Yes, it's it's great that you want to build and upgrade other people's counties, but if you make them too powerful, there's a great good chance that they'll revolt. So you want to focus inward and then work your way out. So the last thing we're going to do before we actually start the clock here is we want to put our council to work. Now your council is very important. Each um, ruler has a council, uh, just able this hint, and they're able to, you get a chancellor, a marshal, a steward, a spymaster, and a chaplain. The chancellor uh, is for diplomatic relations, uh, the marshal is for military, the steward is for taxes or economic, the spymaster is for intrigue, which allows you to do plots, assassinations, and stuff, and then the bishop is uh, for cultural and religious um, abilities. So each of our five council members, or our court, uh, has a different function that we can put them to work. We have to actually physically put them to work. So we want uh, our marshal to train troops, so we want them to train troops here. We want our steward to collect taxes, uh, so we want to collect taxes in our hometown. Uh, we want our spy master to uncover plots so we don't die. We want our bishop uh, to do cultural tech, and then we want our chancellor to improve diplomatic relations uh, or he can sow dissent, or he can fabricate claims. Uh, he can do a lot of different stuff like that. Uh, so we'll build relations with Adamar. Uh, so that's one thing. You want to put him to work before your game starts, and go ahead and get them moving. Well, everyone, that's it for this part of the guide. Uh, hopefully this will get you started uh, on your way to a successful run uh, with your dynasty. Um, if this video gets some responses, uh, I will go ahead and continue. We'll talk about raising an army and levies and... Uh, a lot of different stuff. This is a very, very deep game with a lot of a lot of different layers that we can discuss. So uh, if you like it, hit that like button, hit the sub button, and that's it, guys, and take care. Bye.